So I was telling you about this castle. Not much of it left, as you can see. And do you know why? A wealthy landowner plundered all the flint and the stone, carted it a mile and a half away, and built himself an Elizabethan manor house. He even demolished a three-storey stone keep on the top of this mound. Thought he was above the law, you see, and he probably was. But I'm almost happy to tell you that the manor house has since collapsed. Poetic justice. Every morning when I wake up, it's the pleasure of the peace and quiet, which most of the human race strive for, but we have it here totally. Hold on a minute, peace and quiet, you're right next to the Euston line. Ah, well that's just a reminder <laughs> that we're, society is nearby. On the open market, this 130-year-old cottage in the grounds of a castle, within walking distance of the town centre and the station, would fetch about £450,000. For this ex-serviceman, though, it comes with the job. Do you have to pay any rent? It's really minimal compared to today's standards. Peppercorn? Truly peppercorn. Well, about a penny a year or something? Oh, no, not as peppercorn as that. It's a bit hotter. <laughs> A lot of these tiny monuments have no revenue. Yes, you don't charge people to come in here. No. You could. But then staffing it would cost more than the revenue. So it's free. Yeah. Now you might think that somewhere there'd be an artist's impression of the castle rebuilt by Thomas a Becket after London surrendered to William the Conqueror. There is, but it belonged to a visitor from Texas. Well, I was amazed and overjoyed because I'd searched and inquired all over the United Kingdom and there it was turning up from Dallas. 